Hi, you're watching Court TV. I'm Ted Rollins. Glad to have you along on this Friday. The defense attorneys in the romance novelist murder trial in Oregon will begin their case next week after the state rested yesterday. Defendant Nancy Brophy is accused of killing her husband, Dan Brophy. The jury heard from 47 prosecution witnesses after 12, during 12 days of testimony. The prosecution claims that Nancy Brophy stood to collect more than a million dollars from her husband's death. The final witness for the state was a Portland police investigative accountant, and this witness told the jury that the couple was dealing with some major financial issues at the time of the murder and that they could have helped their situation if they had reduced or eliminated payments to their life insurance policies. When I look at this, I, I think it's a shame because I, I really don't see a reason that they ever had to be behind on their Wells Fargo payment and then never would have had to borrow from the retirement fund. It kind of created this chain reaction that it just built and got bigger and then they need to fix it. The 71-year-old author wrote a lot about true crime. Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae examined some of Brophy's chilling writings and explains why she won't have to answer for some of those writings if she takes the stand. Nancy Brophy's attorneys describe her as a woman with a mildly dark sense of humor. A 71-year-old author who may have wrote about true crime but didn't live it. We're given four dozen oysters to each team. Students found Brophy's husband, chef instructor Dan Brophy, shot to death at work on June 2nd, 2018. We were there with police cars, police tape, police all around the perimeter, and we had officers sitting on that perimeter since the morning upon their arrival that were canvassing people as they were leaving all the apartments, driving away, uh, documenting license plates, asking if they saw anything. Detectives scoured Nancy's life, finances, and writings for three months before naming her a murder suspect. It's an investigation that revealed some chilling writings that a judge ruled won't be used against the author in a court of law. This blog post titled, How to Murder Your Husband, was written by Nancy seven years before she became a widow. The police aren't stupid, she writes. They are looking at you first, so you have to be organized, ruthless, and very clever. Husbands have disappeared from cruise ships before. Why not yours? Well, you have to be able to connect the statements that are made by someone or the research that they've done to the actual crime itself. You have to be able to overcome certain other evidentiary rules so that the jury isn't misled by substantially prejudicial information. The racy title alone isn't enough to make the blog admissible evidence, says constitutional law attorney Andrew Cherkaski. And so what this case is all about with her past statements comes down to a matter of whether it's closely enough connected to the various aspects of this case, both in time and in detail. Nancy Brophy's collection of works included romance novels entitled The Wrong Husband, The Wrong Brother, The Wrong Cop. On her website, it says that she once held a book signing at this local bookstore near her home back in 2016. These were self-published works and sold on Amazon. The search of government records shows it doesn't appear that she ever filed for a copyright of any of those works. Novels that she described as being about pretty men, strong women, and families that don't always work. Nancy Brophy was maintaining all those life insurance policies while continuing down a path of financial ruin. Investigators discovered, as I said, well over $1,000 per month was being paid into these policies at a time that they were struggling to even pay their mortgage. Prosecutors tried to get the article in by arguing it showed what Brophy was knowledgeable about. But the post, written as part of a writer's workshop, suggests using a variety of murder weapons, including a knife. Dan Brophy was killed with a gun. Nancy also writes, fade from the scene. Get your payment up front from someone else, because life insurance probably won't send a check. In reality, Brophy called police a few days after Dan's death. In this recorded conversation, she speaks of wanting to speed up her life insurance payout. So okay. my insurance company said, well, just have the detective write a letter that you're no longer a suspect. And I said, man, I just don't know that he's there. Uh, and I'm not sure that he looks at that way. But if you do, I get you to write the letter. 
Well, you're always concerned about a, a few things when bringing in past statements, whether they're written or whether they're uh, oral from a, a defendant. And number one, it's a First Amendment right. People should not be punished just because they said something. Uh, and number two, it's because you want to make sure that the trial is fair. And there is certain types of evidence that tends to have such a prejudicial effect on a jury. While Tchaikovsky doesn't think the First Amendment would be a strong defense argument, he believes there may be one way those words from the how-to article could make it on the record. If she takes the stand and tries to claim that she didn't know how to do it or wasn't sophisticated, that she uh, didn't have the means or the wherewithal to do it, if something like that comes out, now you could definitely get into the past statements to show that she does have that sort of knowledge and information to be able to commit a crime. Brophy's defense team told jurors during openings on day one she will take the stand to maintain her innocence. Hey, and she's going to have to maintain that line to make sure that uh, all of her writings don't come in, C.K. Hoffler. Eric Fatt is still with us. Eric, to you first. This, um, what does she not have to do when she takes this stand uh, to avoid them, the jury, finding out about her writings? Yeah, Ted, you know, she has to avoid what we call opening the door. So so the judge has already said, hey, this past article is not coming in. But if she gets on the stand and she says something that makes that past article more relevant, that ties it more closely to this case, if she gets up there and says, I've never thought of ever killing my husband. Well, you, you pen this uh, uh, essay, How Do You Kill Your Husband, about 10 years ago. And so that is a way in which it could potentially come in. And CK, the... Um uh, what she does have to do, though, is to convince this jury, why there was no upside. I loved him. I loved Dan, the, the chef. Well, yeah, there's that. Um, and she does, but there might be witnesses that will come in and talk about, you know, because over the course of a marriage, maybe they did have some issues. But I think the financial part, their financial condition, and the focus on keeping up those insurance policies, she's going to have to explain that and be very compelling in her explanation as to why she made a decision to focus heavily on paying up those insurance policies versus making mortgage payments. You know, the one thing that we know is if you don't make a mortgage payment, payment, it's going to affect your credit. So when you make that decision, that's a pretty big decision. If you don't make an insurance payment, well, you may lose the insurance policy, but your credit's not going to be affected. So that balancing act, and now that there's a witness that came up and said, you know, she didn't have to pay these insurance policies in such a grandiose way. And then all the circumstantial evidence of her pushing to get the insurance through. Now, that's what people do. Unfortunately, when people die, they do that, but it just smells and reeks here. Finally, she has to be very careful about opening the door. Um, just as just as Eric said, even something as as smart as, as little as well, you know, I've never really thought of how to kill anyone. Well, if she says that, then that evidence is coming in. Yeah, and then uh, that'll change the game considerably. Not expected to take stand next week. The defense starts their case next week. It's a case that we are monitoring, obviously here at Court TV. C.K. Hoffler, have a wonderful weekend. Really.